the blob it creeps and leaps and glides and slides across the floor right through the door and all around the wall a splotch a blotch be careful of the blob beware of the blob it creeps and leaps and glides and slides across the floor right through the door and all around the wall a splotch a blotch be careful of the blob beware of the blob it creeps and leaps and glides and slides across the floor Star. I thought you were supposed to wish on shooting stars. But I did. But we only saw one. But you see a lot of them up here at night. What? Well, I mean, there's a lot of them out at night. You don't see them in town. That's why I come up here. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what I mean. I mean, you can see them better up here. I know what at... you mean, Steve. No, no. That's not what you think, Janie girl. My name is Jane. Just Jane. For a little while, I, I even thought that shooting star business wasn't just part of your line. But it's not, Janie. Could... Jane, I've, I've never brought anyone up here before. Never? Never. Well, it may be crazy, but... Well, I believe you. Well, you're not crazy. Let's see if I can find I sworn it landed just over this hill. 
Maybe it's like lightning. Sometimes you think it's striking right next door, and it's really miles away. No, I still think it's close by. Well, do you want to go back and try the other road? No. Uh huh? Well, I'm sorry about the bumpy ride. It's all right, Steve. Well, listen, why don't we go back to town and I'll apologize. I'll apologize over a sandwich. I mean, on me, okay? Okay. Try. Maybe I can get it off. No, you can't. Okay. Come on, we'll get you in the car. No. You okay? Go ahead, get in. Take it easy now. Here, better put this on. Now take it easy. We'll get you there as fast as we can. Boy, I hope the doc is in. And Mr. Porter, back to Halla. I'm leaving now. Yes, I'll be back tomorrow night. Probably late. Oh, I haven't forgotten anything. Yeah. Yeah, yes, I'll be fine. Look, Mrs. Porter, if you'll just keep your eye on the house while I'm gone, thank you. Goodbye. Come on. The cowboy. It's no cowboy. That's Steve Andrews. What? Yeah, that's his container. It's a real dog. Well, he can't do that to us. something on his, on his hand. What do you mean? Well, we, we ran into him down on the old north road. Ran into him? No, Doc. We picked him up out on the road. He, he was screaming about this thing on his hand. Let's take a look. Take it easy, old-timer. What is it he's got on his hand? Well, I don't know, Doc. It was kind of like a, a, well, a big blister on his finger, you know? Now, easy now, easy. Now, how, are we, how, how are we going to help you if you don't let us see it? gotten bigger. It was just on his hand before. Cover him with this, please. I'd better give him something. Now, take it easy, old-timer. Everything's going to be all right. Steve, uh, you know who he is? Huh? Uh, do you have any idea who he is? Oh, no, no. All right, take it easy. Steve, huh? could you drive out to the place where you found him? See if you can find somebody that knows what happened. Right. Right. Steve. Yeah. 
Would you turn out the outside light when you go? I don't want to be disturbed. Sure, Doc. Sure. Congratulations. Yeah, for what? For what, he says. Modest. Moved quick, the crown. <laughs> okay, I give up. You just beat out the champion, pal. A little while ago when you came into town. Oh. <laughs> I get it. Well, thanks anyway, but you can keep the crown. No, no, no. Wait a minute, Steve. You just can't stop being the champion like that. You gotta meet a challenger. You mean you? Me? Did I say anything about a race, guys? Huh? Not a word. All right, look, it's been a ball, you know, but I gotta go. Yeah. We know how you go. But we're just not so sure you should drive around so fast. Now, look, I just don't have time to prove anything tonight. Now, do you understand? Well, who's asking you to prove anything? We can beat this kitty car of yours going backwards. Oh, that, that's a foregone transfusion. OK. <laughs> now you're talking, King. And we'll do it just like you said. What did I say? Backwards. Huh? So you could beat this kitty car going backwards. To the light. OK. You say when. OK. When? I told you I got to leave now. Ah, 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 ah. Steve. What's this all about? Hi, Dave. Hey, what's up? Huh? I seem to be missing something. What's going on? Nothing. We're just sitting here waiting for the light. Oh, you mean that light down there? Yeah. And you do know you're on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> I don't know. Would you think it was funny if your father, if Jane's father heard you were booked for reckless driving? OK, don't bring the fathers into this. I'll never do it again. Do what again? Huh? Do what again? Well, whatever you think I'm doing, Dave. Like driving on the wrong side of the road? Well, yeah, yeah. Or maybe even driving backwards? Hey, Dave, that's an idea. Hey, listen, you know that, that 80 or 90 percent of the actors are front-end jobs. You know, in Australia, they got a, airplanes, you know, with a seat set in backwards. So in case we got a collision, they got no con... <laughs> oh, no good, huh? <laughs> okay. 
Lock me up. You mean you were dry? Why? What am I gonna do with you kids? You know I don't want to haul you in. But no more fooling around, Dave. No, I mean it. I... I promise. Right, Jane? Hmm? Right. See? No more horseplay. No more horseplay, Dave. No, no more fooling around. Get out of here. Sergeant Bert? No, 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 Dave. Oh, you're lucky oh. it wasn't Bertsy. Yeah, you're not kidding, man. You wow. don't know the half of it. What? Last night we seen Gig's car parked in front of Nancy's, you know? Listen yeah. to this. So uh, <coughs> we decided we'd move it, hide it on him. So we're moving it down the center of the street. <laughs> when along comes Sergeant Bert. <laughs> so Mooch tells him we can't get it started, you know. He says, I don't care. Uh, you're uh, blocking traffic. Move it. Move it out of the way, you know? So then he gets out of the car, comes over to us, and he's helping us move Gig's car. <laughs> Just then, Gig comes out of the house, and he's yelling, Who's stealing my car? I thought Bertie had dropped his teeth. I bet he did. <laughs> boy, boy, if Gig didn't cover for us, we would have been in trouble. Yeah, you know, I'd sure hate to cross Bertie again tonight. Hey, uh, hey, what happened with you and Dave? Oh, I got a lecture. Promised to be a good boy. Uh, you know, Dave's a good guy. I think we have been steaming it up a little too much. <laughs> There's about two inches of rubber on the street outside Doc's house. Hey, I oh, almost forgot. I gotta do something for the Doc. What? Mm -hmm. I gotta go up on the Old North Road and check on some people. You wanna come with me? Oh, no, man, no. We're going to the flicks, right? Sure, good luck. At this time of night? Yeah. Yeah, it's a midnight spook bit. Oh. Now, we got some rumors there'd be some unprotected women in the balcony. Uh. <laughs> All right, well, listen, why don't you... Come on, come on. You know, come with us. And then you can go to the movies afterwards. Only take a half hour. Come on. It's okay with me. Oh, All right, man, either way. Okay. Good. Good. Groverton, 4771-5296. Hello, is uh, Dr. Gilpin there? Dr. Hallen? Oh, he has? No, no message. Thanks. Goodbye. Something's come up. I'll need your help right away. No, you've got to come back, Kate. There's a man here with some sort of a parasite on his arm. It's assimilating his flesh at a frightening speed. Now, I may have to get ahead of it and amputate. Now, I... I don't know what it is or where it came from. Hey, man, look what at that, it? will you? What is it? Wow, I don't know. Hey, what landed here? Yeah, we must be getting pretty close to the front line. <laughs> hey, why would anybody leave a lantern here? I don't know. Yeah. The old man, man. What is it, Steve? It's hot. Watch it. A shooting star? Hey, we saw that too. A real big one. Like a skyrocket? Oh, yeah, about an hour ago. Do you think this is it? I don't know. Let me see. Wow. Oh, a real piece of sky. Hey, Mooch. You mean that this little pebble's been out there hot riding around the universe? Probably big as a moon when it started. No kidding. Let me see it, Mooch. And this is all that's left? Well, it's all that's here. 
I'll bet there is a house close by. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a house. It sounds like a dog. Come on, Steve. Let's go look. Yeah, sure. Hey, wait a minute. see anything but just that little dog. Oh, Steve, open the door and let him yeah. out. Okay. Come on. Oh, come, on. come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, pal. Come on. Oh, come on, pal. Doesn't look like anybody that's there at all. Come on. Uh. I guess it's the old man's dog. Don't you worry, baby. You can run. Think this is the place? Mm, sure looks like it. Yeah, yeah, this is a cozy spot. No neighbors, no cars, no roads, no lights. Yeah, no movies. Come on, you guys, let's get out of here. Let's go, move. I guess yeah. there's nothing else you can find out here, Steve. No, no, I guess not. Why don't you come with us to the spooky show, huh? Oh, you, you like it? <laughs> no, yeah. no, thanks. Oh, uh, you gotta stop taking everything so serious, like... Gotta live a little, you gotta go, you know? Yeah, Steve, you gotta hang loose, <laughs> like, like me. Okay, let's hear it, the spook show. Come on. Let's go, you guys! Yeah, come on. Steve? Yeah? What about the dog? I don't know. Well, I mean, we can't just leave him here, he'd starve to death. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Couldn't we take him with us? Sure, I guess that's the least we could do for the old man. Come on, let's go. Thanks for coming back. It's okay. What do you want me to do? Well, you better take his pulse, but don't touch that material on his right hand. It absorbs flesh on contact, like an acid. Doctor? Where is he? What do you mean? <laughs> Kate, stand still. Don't move to absorb the old man completely. I don't know what this is, but it's got to be killed before it gets any bigger. Oh, doctor, I'm afraid. Try to stay as far away from it as you can. <laughs> Kate, be calm. Now do as I say. Behind you, the trichloracetic acid. Throw it? Yes, but for heaven's sake, don't get any of it on your hands. Doctor, nothing will stop it. A gun in my den. I've got to go for it, Kate. I'll try to stay absolutely still. Don't go, don't leave me. I'll be right back. Doctor! Come back! Come back! Kate, what's the matter? Kate! Kate, what is it? Kate! It doesn't look like there's anybody here. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe maybe he took the old man over to the hospital. Anyway, I'll check. Okay.
Listen, I'm gonna check in the garage and see if the doc's car is there. Oh, okay. the dock. It's got... Well, what's the matter with him? I just like to think in the old man's hand. Only, only it was bigger, and then, then it was on his old head, and then in, in, in just a second he disappeared. He disappeared? He was all gone. He was all gone. You know, he just disappeared Steve, just a second. what are you talking about? I'm sorry. Get in the car, Jane. Well, what are you going to do, Steve? We're going to go to the police. They'll know what to do. Well, we can get someone over there tomorrow. Uh, we'll have someone well, over there. Well, what's this? Hey, watch it, Dave. Don't mix up the pieces. Richie, you old buzzard. I didn't know you were a chess player. It's like I've been telling you, Dave. You're not the only thinker around here. Uh, it's nothing, just a hobby, kind of, you know? Well, wait. Wait a minute. I think this is pretty interesting. Who do you play with? Well, late at night when I'm here by myself and things are pretty slow, I... Well, you gotta do something. You ought to take up chess, Dave. Loosen up your gray matter a little. I guess I'd better. You'll have to teach me, Richie. Sure, Dave. Anytime. Dave! Doc Hallen's been killed. Doc Hallen? What happened? It's over at his place. You gotta come now. Oh, wait a minute, Steve. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Now, this thing had killed the doc. But well, what was it? Stop with it, kid. But it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a mass that keeps getting bigger and bigger. It... Come on, Steve. Make sense. I know, I know. Look, Dave, you gotta see this thing to believe what I'm telling you. Maybe the thing you saw was a uh, monster? Yeah, maybe it was. I don't know. Hold on, Jim. Now, what is this, Steve? A little while ago, it was driving backwards. And now it's monsters. Look, he's not making it up, Dave. Honest. Dave, I'm not kidding, I swear. Come on over to the docks. You can see it for yourself. You're crazy if you go. Can't you see it's a gag? He says Doc Hallen's dead, Jim. We've got to check it out. Let's go. Richie, you mind the store. Hey, listen. I'm in. Cornwall, Downingtown HQ. office will be closed all day Saturday. Dr. Howe.
But wait a minute. What's the matter? You're not going to go in there. The thing might be in there waiting for you. Well, we'll have to take that chance, won't we? But I'm not kidding. Dr. Hallam. Dr. Hallam? <laughs> Seems to be a short circuit in here. You got your light? Everything looks okay. I saw him in. Clark. I'll see if I can find a key that'll work. No, the key's already here. It's been locked from the inside. Hello, who's in there? Better go around and see if the window's unlocked. If it isn't, break the glass, come in and unlock the door. Right. You're not gonna let him do that. Now, don't worry, Steve. Sergeant Bird knows how to handle himself. And this is the only way to get to the bottom of this. I'll see if I can find the fuse box. Okay. Steve. I wonder where the little dog is. Yeah. Well, what do you think happened to him? I don't know. Well, that's more like it. This must have been what blew the fuse. What about this, Steve? I don't know, Dave. I can't figure it, but I know I saw the duck. All right, kid, cut the act. What really happened here? I don't know. All of a sudden, your mind is a blank. Is that it? No. Steve, are you sure this is the room? Yes, yes, I'm sure of it. This has been fired. But I haven't seen any shot marks around any place. Let me tell you what happened, kid. You and whoever else was in on this with you thought you'd put one over on the police. So you break in here when the doc's not around, you mess the place up a little. Oh, wait a minute, Jim. The kids couldn't have done this. You saw for yourself. The window was locked from the inside, and so was the door. They rigged it with a piece of string. It's part of their plan to make us look silly. I think you're doing that pretty well by yourself, Sergeant. Steve. Was there anybody else with you? No. How about when I stopped you, over on Morgan Street, when you were pulling that stunt? They, those kids had nothing to do with this. Well, who were they? Why, it was Tony Grisette and, and Mooch Miller. Those kids? Well, that's your answer right there. They're just the kind of kids to pull a trick like this. But this time, they've gone too far. What goes on out here? Land sake. What are you doing here, Mrs. Porter? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Wait till doctor gets back and sees this. Back from where? Lieutenant, was it burglars? Well, we don't know yet. Where's Dr. Hallam? Johnsonville, a medical convention. You know, I told him this would happen one of these days, the way he leaves everything unlocked. Of course, uh, it was my fault, too. He asked me to keep an eye on the place. But that's not true, Dave. He never left. I don't think I've had the pleasure. Oh, this is Steve Andrews, Mrs. Porter. He seems to think the doctor got into some kind of trouble here tonight. No, sir. The doctor don't know anything about this. He called me just before he left. He didn't leave? Look, Dave, I'll, I'll bet his car is still in the garage. Mm, might be. Doctor sometimes goes in somebody else's car. Dr. Gilpin, from over in Grover Town. Jim, call Dr. Gilpin. Right. He won't be home. 
Just checking. Mrs. Porter, did you hear any gunshots tonight? I sure did. Tonight and every other night. The people downstairs have those old movies on their television. There's always some shooting or screaming. Oh, whoever this thief was, he didn't have to tear up the place like this. I feel terrible. Oh, wait a minute, Mrs. Porter. I don't want any of this touch. Well, I don't want the doctor to come back tomorrow and find the place like this. Bad enough, the window's broken all. But, Mrs. Porter... Uh, now, you boys have your work to do, and I have mine. There's a criminal walking around out there, free as a bird. You go get him. Let me clean up here. Mrs. Porter, you don't understand. We may want to check here for fingerprints later. Dr. Gilpin's on his way to Johnsonville. Did he pick up Dr. Hallam? I spoke with Mrs. Gilpin, and she said that Dr. Hallam had called around 11 o'clock just after her husband left. But she thought they were going together. Well, where can we reach him in Johnsonville? I don't know. I didn't ask her that. Uh, St. John's Hotel. That's where the doctor usually stays. Well, they should be there in a couple of hours. We'll leave word to have him call us when he checks in. Can't I just dust around the fingerprints? Tomorrow. Well, let's go, kids. Dave, this is all wrong. All right, kid, the show's over. It was a cute act, but this time it didn't work. This locked door business really hung in. If everything happened like you said it didn't, where's the doctor? Now, where's this old man? Now, where's the big bad monster? I don't know. Hey, hand me that small hammer, will you? Why don't you finish that tomorrow? I ain't gonna be here. Going on a hunting trip. I didn't know you was a hunter. <laughs> Neither did I. We got a little cabin up in the south woods, the boys and me. And I'm telling you, Marty boy, we're going up there this weekend, and I'm going to get so roaring, stinking, no good drunk, I won't be able to see. Hey, why don't you come with us? It'll do you some good. Oh, I don't think Martha had figured that way. Do you have to tell your old woman everything? Tell her you got to see a sick friend. Tell her your uncle died. Tell her you're going away so you can love her more when you get back. Good night. Boy. I'm so tired of looking at the inside guts of second-hand cars, I can spit grease. You know, Marty, if I didn't get away once in a while and cut loose, I'd blow a gasket. And when I come in on Monday, if Mr. Johnson looks at me funny just once, just once, you know what I'm going to do to him, Marty? Hey, Marty! <laughs> Look, Steve, you keep telling me about a monster. I don't know what you're talking about. All I want to do is clear this thing up. All right, I agree, but I still don't see why you had to call our folks. Dave, it's for you. What else what, could I do, Well, Steve? give us a chance to find out what happened. You know we didn't tear up Doc's house. Look, how long have you known me, Dave? Have I ever done anything all like right. this before? All right, you know I, I believe you. But I still don't think you're telling me all you know. Dave. Hello? Yeah. Well, young lady, do you mind telling me where you've been spending the evening? Daddy, it's all right. Oh, yes, everything's fine. I always stop by the police station in the middle of the night to pick up my daughter. Don't you realize what this will do to me? Why, by morning, it will be all over town. Oh, we were just trying to warn people. Why, after all, I am principal of the high school. Young man, this is the last time you're ever going to take my daughter out. Steve didn't do anything wrong. Mr. Andrews, can you make anything out of all this? I can't. Well, take it easy, Mr. Martin. We'll straighten everything out. Hello, son. Dad, I saw something terrible tonight. And nobody will believe us. Mr. Martin, Mr. Andrews. Uh, apparently, Doc Hallen's office was broken into by vandals tonight. And Steve and Jane seem to know something about it. Vandals? My daughter? Well, you don't think our kids were mixed up in it, do you? All we know is that they told us something had happened over at Dr. Hallen's house. We're not accusing anyone of what we found. Now, we can't be more definite until we contact Dr. Hallen in Johnsonville. Dad, it isn't vandalism. Dr. Hallen is dead, and he was killed by some sort of a monster. Now, I know, because I saw it, Dad. Lieutenant, I want you to know that Steve is not in the habit of telling lies. If he says he's not mixed up in this vandalism, you can be sure it's the truth. Did you see this thing too, Jane? Well...
No, not, not exactly. Well, look, folks, we'll all know more in the morning after we've called Johnsonville. I think the best thing now is for all of us to go home and get some sleep. Maybe it's a good idea, son. We can talk about this some more at home. Sure, Pop. Oh, sorry. Get out of the house as fast as you can. I'll, get I'll be over. Maybe Bertie's right. Maybe this, this is just a gag like those school fraternities were throwing last year. Remember how they stitched that bathing suit to the statue of General Hayes? I don't think this is a gag. Why didn't you book the kids in? Why well, make a big thing of it tonight if we can clear the whole thing up tomorrow? Boy, if it was Bertie, he'd have them strung up by the thumbs by now. Maybe he would. Police department. Hold on. It's Bertie. Hello? Dave? Yeah? I checked around the neighborhood. A couple people thought they heard shots, but they weren't sure. Okay, Jim. Doc's place locked up? Yeah. Check back in, then. Right. We'll get the truth out of those kids if it takes all night. I sent the kids home. Home? Are you crazy? Jim, we'll take care of this whole thing tomorrow. Yes, that's all. Bertie got some idea what this is? I don't care what Bertie's ideas are. He acts like he was still fighting the war. Just because some kid smacks into his wife on the turnpike doesn't make it a crime to be 17 years old. OK, so I don't know what the kids are up to tonight. But I'm not going to throw them into a cell like a couple of vagrants. We'll put this puzzle together in the morning. In the meantime, at least we know where the kids are. go by myself. Will you be back pretty soon? Well, I don't know. Aren't you afraid to go out by yourself? Yes, I, I guess I am, Danny. I'm not afraid. I'll guard you. Oh, no, Danny. You, you've got a bigger job to do. You've got to stay here and guard Mommy and Daddy. Oh, they don't need guarding. Oh, look, Danny, go on to bed. If, look, if you go to bed, I might, I might bring you a little dog all your very own. A dog? Honest? Honest. I cross my heart. Oh, boy! Oh, now, shh. Go on up to bed. What's his name? Oh, any name you want, Danny. Can I name him William? Oh, that's a fine name, Danny. Now, you better run on up to bed. Go on. Oh, I don't like William. Oh, you run on to bed, Annie. Is he asleep? Yes. Do you think he did something wrong? I don't know. I, I don't think so. And apparently the police don't either, or they wouldn't have sent him home. I felt that he was keeping something from us. Yes, he did seem more willing to talk when we were at the police station. Well, I think that... Well, tomorrow he and I talk will make you straighten this out. Maybe. After a good night's sleep. Yeah. Good night. Night, dear. me to death. What are you doing here? 
Listen, Jane, I told you to wait over there. Well, the folks went right to bed, so I came on out. I didn't see you, so I thought I should just come on over. All right, come on, let's go around the corner. Sorry. At least I could have done is thank you for coming out tonight. You didn't need to. I never needed to talk to him before, not as much as I do now. Well, we're in this together, aren't we, Steve? You know, I wish that we'd... I must be getting confused. I know we saw the old man. I know we took him to the docks, and I know the docks sent us out to see if we could find out what happened. And I know the old man had something on his hand, something he couldn't get off. Something that kept getting larger. And then I... I think I saw the dock. He was standing by the window, and he was... He was, well, he was, he was trying to get out. And that thing was all over him, and, and then he just dissolved while I stood there. I think I saw this. I believe you, kid. You know, plenty of people in their right mind thought they saw things that didn't exist, you know, like flying saucers. The light was just right and the angle and the imagination. Oh, boy, if that's what it is, then this is just an ordinary night. And you and I are going to go home and go to sleep, and tomorrow when we get up, that sun's going to shine. Just like yesterday. Good old yesterday. Steve. Well, you believe you did see it, don't you? I don't know. I... I... That's not true, Steve. Well, maybe... Maybe now you... You don't want to believe it. Maybe you'd like to tell yourself it didn't happen. Steve, you're not the kind of person that can turn your back on something you know is true. I don't know. Well, you actually did see what happened to Dr. Hallam. How do you know I did? Because I know you. Okay. Well, now what do we do? How do you get people to protect themselves from something they don't believe in? Well, you keep trying and, and hoping you can find some sort of, of proof that'll convince them. Okay. I mean, I don't like it much. But I guess the only way you can find that is to go out and look for it. I'll go get the car. You sure you want to go with me? Yes. I wouldn't give much for our chances. You know, wandering around the middle of the night trying to find something that if we found it, it might kill us. If we could only find a couple people to help us. <laughs> Who? Well, your friends, Tony Mooch and Al. Hey, you know, that that's worth a try. The demon who possesses your soul. Wait a bit. I am coming for you. I have so much to show you. 
Tony, listen, I want to see you outside. Hey, what gives? I thought you cats didn't dig spooky shows. Tony, this is important. Outside. Hey, what's up? Shh. I'll explain outside. Now, this is important. You missed most of the picture. <laughs> You're not going to get your money's worth. None of us are, unless somebody keeps quiet. Oh, look, you've got to come with us. There's nobody else we can go to. Okay, you kids, knock it off. Come on. What, walk out on a movie? Let's cut out. The cat's going to make it? Okay, oh, not me. I'm part of this chair, and I can't move. Steve, you made us waste our 80 cents. Now, what gives? Yeah, what's the scoop? Yeah, what's the big idea, Steve? Would you believe me if I told you there was something inside of that rock we found tonight? Something that could wipe out this whole town? <laughs> oh, come on, Steve. <laughs> hey, knock it off! Go ahead, Steve. I saw this thing kill Dr. Hallen tonight. Kill Dr. Hallen? Come on. That's right. Well, what is it? I don't know. But one thing's for sure. If it can kill Dr. Hallen, it can kill somebody else. Well, what do you want us to do, Steve? All right. We're going to find this thing, and we're going to make people believe us. Let's try Johnsonville again, Richie. OK. You saw a strange one? What do you mean? On my way back here, I ran into Mr. Connors coming out of that bar in the building he owns over on 2nd Street. He just stopped in there and there was nobody there. Queerest thing I've ever seen. TV was playing away, the cash register was sitting there with all the money still in it. Nobody around. No bartender, nobody. Oh, look in there on the way home. Forget it, the place is all locked up now. Why don't you go home and get some shut-eye? You can't run our shift in US 2, you know. Yeah, I know. I wish I knew where those two doctors were, though. Any luck, Richie? Nope. They're not there. You want me to call the other hotels? There's a lot of them between here and Johnsonville. No. Uh, I guess you're right. I guess there's nothing here that won't wait till morning. Well, I'll see you guys. Night. Night. Just to warn you. Oh, a warning. Well, that's yeah. fine. I didn't know you cared. Hey, folks. Da, 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 da. Oh, I want you to meet Paul Revere. And this is Mrs. Revere. They, they, they've come to give us a warning about something important. The British are coming. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Excuse me. We were just, just looking for a monster. <laughs> Monsters? You must have been talking to that guy who cruised in here from 2nd Street. Man, I don't know what they're serving over there tonight. It sure must be great L stuff. Listen, listen, we're trying to tell you we don't want to get served. No, I have monsters in here all the time, so beat it. We don't serve kids anyway. Where is he? Over there, in the doorway of your dad's door. Hey. That's funny. The door's not locked. You mean it's been open all night? Well, I don't know. This is Friday. The store closes at 10, you know, and then old Mr. Wiedemeyer sweeps up and then he collects all the push cards. Huh. You know, he works around for a couple of hours before he locks up, but I'm sure he'd never be this late, not.
Turn on the light. Steve, what is it? I don't know. Oh, it's a broom and stuff that Mr. Wintermark cleans up with. It's spread all over the aisle. Take it easy, Jane. Oh, Steve, the little dog. Oh, don't cry, oh. Jane. There's nothing we can do about it. Oh. Hey, Jane. Now, you just put this on. It'll be all right. Oh. Steve, what are we going to do? I don't know. That thing probably isn't far away. And we've got to get out of here before it comes back for us. Now, come on. All right? Oh. seen him running down the street, scared, oh, scared. Oh, Hey, what are we doing now? We're gonna huh? call the police. They want evidence. They got all the evidence they want. There's a phone at the corner. Hmm. 
Go on. You talk to him, Tony. Me? Why me? I'm supposed to be home asleep. If they think I'm running around loose, they'll never believe us. Yeah, here. Here's the dime. Come on. Come on. Hey, what will I say? Ask for Dave. And listen, Tony, you give it to him straight. You tell him to get out to the store, quick. You tell him to bring every piece of hardware he can find in the police station. Hello, police department. Who's this? Papa, who? Is every kid in town in on this? Now, I don't know who this is, but let me tell you, you're going to wish you never thought of this. Hello? Hello? Big deal, boy. Boy, like to take that down. Bert the Schmerz? Yeah. Wouldn't you know it? Oh. All right. We tried to do it the right way. Now we're going to wake this town up ourselves. Yeah, yeah, but how? Yeah, how? Any way we can think of. We've got to stop being a babysitting service and start being a police department. Just kids, Jim. Just kids. That's about the craziest argument I've ever heard. Every criminal in the world was a kid once. What does it prove? You know what I think? I think they've got it in for me. You? Yeah. They've heard about my war record, and it bugs them. They're trying to break me down, see what makes me tick. Anything they can try, they try. No, I don't think so, Jim. What the? Sounds like New Year's Eve. Against what, darling? I don't know. Has everyone in this fool town gone crazy? Danny, do you know where Janie is? She's just gone. I'm going to get to the bottom of this right now. Come on, listen. Now, several people have been killed already. Now we, now, we had to make this noise. We had to make it so you'd listen to us, so we could warn you. If we're in trouble, where are the police? You. Boy, this time you've really hung yourself. Now, look. 
Now, look, Sarge, just give me a chance to talk to them, that's all. I don't know what kind of a game it is you're playing, kid, but whatever it is, it's going to stop right now. Here comes Dave. What's going on here, Jim? Steve. Dave, make them listen to me. There is a monster. We saw it again in Dad's store. Dave, it's bigger now. Your story's gotten bigger now, kid. Dave, look at me. Do I look like somebody's playing a practical joke? Am I laughing? Or am I, am I scared stiff? What are you going to do? He's telling the truth. Now, oh, wait a minute. It's one thing to make a fool out of yourself, but it's another thing to make a fool out of the police department and the whole town. He's right, Lieutenant. You've been wrong before. Maybe I have. But as long as I'm in charge of this town's police force, I'm going to handle this thing the way I see fit. And your job right now is to help me restore some order around here. Yes, sir. Listen, this is an emergency, and it can affect every one of us. That's all I can tell you right now. But we're trying to get things under control. In order to do that, we have to clear this area immediately. So please go home and stay there. We'll keep in touch with you through your radio station. Now be careful pulling your cars out of this area. Go home slowly and quietly. Just keep calm, everything's going to be all right. Anything I can do to help you, Luke, Dave? Lieutenant, what's going on? Ask your daughter, Mr. Martin. She can tell you more than I can. Phil, can you boys give us a hand clearing this area? Sure. Do you have any guns? A couple of them. Get them. Say, Dave, what is this thing that our kids are talking about? I don't know, but if it's in the market, we'll all know in a few minutes. Now all the images of horror, the demons of your mind, crowd in on you to destroy you. over to the door and shine your big light into the market. Sure, Dave. Right. Okay. right. What? Hey, who's in the store? Huh? There's nobody in here but us monsters. thing I've ever seen in my life. Come on, we've got to clear this area.
goose. What happened out there? What? It's all over us. What do you mean it's all over? Take it easy. What's the matter? Jim, get the telephone company. Have a connection with a diner. Fast. I'm getting out of here. Now, wait a minute. You open that door and we've had it. Do you understand? You want to die? I don't think it can be killed, Steve, but we've got to try one more thing. Oh, okay. Is everybody all right? Okay, but not for long. We can drop a power line on it, you understand? Yeah. There should be enough juice in that line to burn the thing to a crisp. Yeah, get everyone down the cellar. We'll do it in 60 seconds, Steve. Cellar! Okay. All set to go. Try not to miss, Jim. Okay, let's have those lights. Fifteen seconds. Quiet now. I think the upstairs is clear. Good. Keep your ear to that phone, Richie. Okay, Jim. It didn't work. Why don't you do something? Something. The diner's on fire. Well, can we put it out? Any suggestions, Hal? Anyway, not enough oxygen in there to keep a fire going for ten minutes. There's something burning. Let 
CO2. Hey, that's it. It's cold. That's why it didn't come in the icebox after us. It can't stand cold. You got any more of these things? No. Huh? This thing's running out. The phone. Hey, Dave! Hey, Dave! Hey, Dave! Anybody on the phone? Hey. Dave. Ah, what's up? Uh, CO2. Phil, Phil, you got any CO2 extinguishers? Not many, some soda acid. Well, get the CO2s out here and start hitting around those cellar windows. What? Just do it, Phil, and have your men check these buildings for fire extinguishers, but only the CO2 kind. Bring back everyone you can get your hands on and hurry! All right, okay. Hey, maybe we can help. Let's get some of the guys together, huh? Okay. Lieutenant, I know where there are 20 extinguishers of that type. Good. Where? At the high school. Who can go with me? Hey, right here, Mr. Martin. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Okay, hey, let's go. Over here, Mr. Martin. We got it. This thing's running out. Hey. Dave! Dave! CO2 fire extinguishers! Dave, can you hear me? CO2! Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Let's Four or five of these things, Dave. How many of them do you need? A lot more than that. Keep looking. It's all we can do. Okay. Colonel Spaulding got me through to Washington. They thought I was crazy at first, but they're getting someone now. Hey, here come the kids back. still out, so we can't do much in the way of refrigeration. We think we've got it under control, but we won't rest easy until it's frozen solid. Now, no, no, it's too big for that, and it's impossible to cut it. No, sir, a bomb would spread it all over the country. Look, this thing has killed probably 40 or 50 people since last night. In a few hours, we're going to have the sun overhead. I think you should send us the biggest transport plane you have. And take this thing up to the Arctic or somewhere and drop it where it'll never thaw out. Thank you for getting us out of there, you know. For a while, I didn't think we were going to make it. That makes two of us. What are they going to do with that thing, Dave? Well, the Air Force is sending a Globemaster in. They're flying it to the Arctic. It's not dead, is it? No, it's not. Just frozen. I don't think it can be killed. But at least we've got it stopped. Yeah, as long as the Arctic stays cold. Huh? 